history of crime detection has produced no more famous name than that of Sexton Blake. We present William Franklin as Sexton Blake, with David Gregory as his assistant, Tinker, and Heather Chasen as his secretary, Paula Dane, in a series of case histories by Donald Stewart. Today's episode is called Conjurer's Coffee. Kendrick is here, Mr. Blake. Oh, uh, right. Send him in, Paula. This way, Mr. Kendrick. Good morning, Mr. Blake. It was good of you to see me at such short notice. Uh, sit down, Mr. Kendrick. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, what's the trouble? I think I ought to tell you that I may be wasting your time. I've already been to the police and, well, in a polite sort of way, they just laughed at me. I won't laugh at you. I've got nothing really concrete to go on, you see. Only a hunch. About what? Norma, the girl I'm... I was engaged to. The engagement's been broken off. She's dead, Mr. Blake. I see. Or perhaps you'd like to tell me about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still a bit shaken. You see, I've been in America for the last nine months. I'm an electronics engineer. And I only arrived back in this country two days ago. I went straight along to see Norma. She shared a flat with a girl named Janet Lacey. Janet told me that Norma had died two weeks ago. Ah, oh, pneumonia. At least that's what they say, but... I'm not satisfied. The whole thing strikes me as odd. In what way odd? All the circumstances. Norma and Janet also had a bungalow in the country, a place called Harvest Green. Norma died there. She died... She died there alone, Mr. Blake. Alone? Except for the doctor and the nurse. Janet was away on a modeling job and didn't even know that Norma was ill. Was Norma... Um, what's her other name? Oh, sorry, Grayson. Norma Grayson. Was Miss Grayson a model, too? Yes, photographic. Well, surely someone must have known that she was ill. Apparently not. I hadn't heard from her for some time. Was that unusual? Not really. She didn't like writing letters much, and I was dodging about quite a bit of my job. I wasn't supposed to get leave for another fortnight. Does that mean that nobody expected you back here? No, no, they didn't. Well, didn't you write or cable, Miss Grayson? I wanted to give her a surprise. I was hoping we could get married before I went back. Mm. Well, Mr. Kendrick, what exactly do you want me to do? I want you to look into this illness of Norma's and make sure it was all open and above board. Is there something to suggest that it wasn't? I don't know, but I'm quite certain there's something wrong. And what about the death certificate? Who was the doctor who attended her? Now, that's one of the things that makes me suspicious. Nobody seems to know. Somebody must know uh, who arranged the funeral. I can't tell you that either. Miss Lacey doesn't know. It was all over when she got back. You say Miss Grayson was a model. Uh, did she have an agent? Yes, uh, Kenneth Miles. Janet says he didn't know she was ill either. You see, it all seems to have been kept very hush-hush. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Where did the funeral take place, Mr. Kendrick? At Harvest Green. Very well, we'll start there. We'll get my assistant Tinker to drive it down there now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Are you Mr. Byles? Yes, sir, Jonas Byles, sir. Our terms are very reasonable and everything in the best possible taste. I understand that you were responsible for the funeral of Miss Norma Grayson. Miss Norma Grayson. Isn't that right? Oh, indeed, yes. Very sad, sir. Poor young lady. Who gave you your instructions? Uh, may I inquire the reason for these questions, sir? I'm a relative. Oh. Well, I trust that no fault has been found with the funeral arrangements, sir. I assure you that I had the highest reputation as a mortician. No doubt. I'll repeat my question. Who gave you your instructions, Mr. Barr? Uh, Dr. Ridley. He attended the poor young lady. Is Dr. Ridley a local man? Oh, no, no, sir. London. And Dr. Ridley signed the death certificate? Uh, yes, sir. The uh, cause of death was pneumonia. How well do you know Dr. Ridley? Well, I only met him once uh, when he came to make the arrangements for the interment. Who paid your account? Uh, Dr. Ridley, sir. He sent us a check. Rather unusual for the doctor to pay for the funeral of his patient, isn't it? Well, possibly Dr. Ridley was acting on behalf of a third party, sir. Did he say that? Oh, no, sir. I merely made the suggestion. But nobody knew Miss Grayson was ill. Indeed, sir. Well, perhaps then it was at her own wish. <laughs> Some people don't want to alarm their friends. Is there any grounds for that, or is it just another suggestion? Oh, it was only an opinion, sir. Friends might prove to be a nuisance. Yes, eh? Well, it depends upon the uh, patient's temperament. Oh, they might want to know too much. Well, I really couldn't say, sir. I was only the undertaker, you see. You didn't know Miss Grayson personally. I understand that she was in the habit of coming to Harvest Green quite frequently for weekends and sometimes longer periods. Oh, of course, I've seen her in the village and her friend, Miss Lacey, but I've never spoken to either of them. I see. I should like Dr. Ridley's address. It's just one moment, sir. I'll uh, look in my book. There. Ah. Here we are, sir. 17 Pelman Avenue, Hampstead. Thank you. 
By the way, I suppose the bungalow is empty. Yeah, I imagine so, sir. Where's the key? I sent it back to Dr. Ridley, sir. I see. Oh, goodbye for the present, Mr. Barnes. Come on, Kenny. We'll get back and see what Dr. Ridley has to say for himself. You can rest assured that everything was done for Miss Grayson that was possible, Mr. Blake. Nurse Craig, a most experienced woman, was with her all the time. It seems to me a little strange. None of her friends were informed, Dr. Ridley. That was at her own wish. She seemed anxious that no one should know. Why? Physical illness has mental repercussions sometimes, Mr. Kendrick. Is that another way of saying that Miss Grayson was insane? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing of the kind. She was in a highly nervous state. I'd been treating her for some considerable time. Before she was taken ill at the bungalow? Oh, yes. For several weeks. Ah, that's why she sent for you instead of the local doctor. I suppose so. And I suggested that she should go into hospital, but she wouldn't hear of it. She was ill enough for that when you saw her. Yes. And she didn't want to get in touch with anyone. Not even her agent. No, Mr. Kendrick. She was most insistent nobody should be told. I don't understand it. Well, it struck me that she was frightened. Frightened? Well, probably there was no tangible reason. She never actually said anything either to me or to Mrs. Craig. What made you think she was frightened then? Just her manner. She was anxious that no one should know where she was. Now, that doesn't sound a bit like Norma. You've been away a long time, Mr. Kendrick. What's that got to do with it? I knew her well enough to be engaged to her. People change. Especially if their nerves are in a bad condition. Do you think that her fears, if any, were imaginary, Doctor? Well, your patients are not always completely candid. Meaning uh, that she was in some kind of trouble and she was keeping it to herself. I have no evidence to prove that that's what you thought. Well, yes. You paid the funeral expenses, didn't you? Biles told you that? I was only dispersing the money. It was Miss Grayson's. I don't quite understand. Well, she gave me a check to cash when she first was taken ill. She said if anything happened to her, I was to use the money to cover expenses. Well, that's what I did. Rather an extraordinary thing for her to do, Doctor. Perhaps. She was very insistent. What was Miss Grayson's bank, Dr. Ridley? Her bank? Well, do you know I... I really can't remember. Come in. Jim, of course. Now, this is Mr. Sexton Blake. Mr. Blake, Janet Lacey. How do you do, Miss Lacey? Come into the sitting room, won't you? I hope we're not disturbing you, Janet. Of course not. Sit down. Would you like a drink? Uh, not for me, thanks. Mr. Blake. No, thanks, Miss Lacey. Mr. Blake is inquiring into this business of Norma's death. Is there anything to inquire into? Yes, I think so. Do you know Dr. Ridley? Dr. Ridley? You don't know him. Should I? He was Miss Grayson's doctor. He'd been treating her for a nervous complaint for some time. A nervous complaint? Norma? That surprises you. Oh, it does, rather. I can't imagine anyone less subject to nerves than Norma was. You hadn't noticed before she went down to the bungalow that she appeared to be worried or frightened about anything? No, she was in the best of spirits. Where did she bank, Janet? Tim, you know Norma wouldn't start a banking account. She always said it was so easy to write a check you spent too much. Kenneth looked after her money, the same as he does mine. He looks after tax and everything. I knew Ridley was lying, Blake. Yes, very interesting. Miss Lacey, have you been down to the bungalow at Harvest Green since Miss Grayson's death? No. I was going, but I felt I couldn't face it. Everything should be as she left it. Mrs. King may have been in to tidy up. She used to do our cleaning. But she lives in the village? Yes. Have you a key, Miss Lacey? Of course. We shared the bungalow between us. Norma used it more than I did, but we each had a key. I'd like to lower us there to the whole base. What on earth for? I've no idea. How did they get in? Oh, of course, Norma's key. Which Biles sent back to Dr. Ridley. Ridley? If it was Dr. Ridley, what on earth could he have been looking for? Quiet. Did Miss Grayson bring any luggage with her when she came down here? I don't know. But she had two suitcases at the flat. They're not there now. They don't appear to be here either. Come, buddies. Hmm. And card advertising the Salamander restaurant in Soho. That's Capelli's place. Norm and I used to go there sometimes. Did she know Capelli? I don't know. That card may mean nothing, but if Capelli's somehow mixed up in this, it's big and dangerous. <laughs> I'm glad to see you haven't left the firm altogether, Mr. Blake. Now, Paula... You didn't come back at all yesterday after you and Tinker left with Mr. Kendrick. Oh, dear, are you feeling lonely? I must arrange for somebody to sit in with you. You know, there are times when I could scream. You do, if you feel like it. Oh, you are impossible. I'd like to point out that a number of people wanted to get in touch with you yesterday, including Chief Inspector Coots. I mean, you usually tell me something before you go and keep in touch by telephone. I know, I'm sorry, but I couldn't manage it. What did Coots want? Well, he didn't say, but he's coming in this morning. I said I hoped you'd be back by then. I want to see Coots. Paula, will you get on the nickels? I want to check up on Norma Grace and background, friends, relations, anything you can get hold of about her. And I want the same for Janet Lacey. Oh, and Dr. James Ridley. Anything else? 
Oh, that'll do to be going on with. Here's Ridley's address. Tinker will give you the dope on the others. Well, I'd better split it up between Nichols and Didcot. Yeah, good idea. I do have these occasional flashes of genius. If that's Coot, shoot him in, eh? Yes, I know the other bit by heart. Any luck, Paula? Yes. Mr. Blake's expecting you, Chief Inspector. Oh, good. I'll go through, shall I? Hello, so, Blake. Tried to get you yesterday. Yes, I know. What's all the excitement? Oh, it's this banknote job. Getting me down. Oh, dead end, eh? Practically. What can you do with all the men concerned to the hold-up dead? Not all, Coots. There's the man who shot him and made off with the loot. Two million quid in used notes. Vanished. Not to trace. Well, no wonder he's giving you a headache. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen sometime. A gang plans a hold-up. A van containing used notes for destruction. They get away with it, shoot the guard. And then somebody unknown steps in, shoots them and grabs the bootle. That's quite original. I'd rather have something a bit more hackneyed. Yes, yeah, he's an early danger to bursting a blood vessel. Well, I wish I could help. Well, I was hoping you might suggest a new line. Tried all the old ones. I'm afraid I haven't any ideas at the moment, but perhaps you can help me. What do you want to know? Anything you can tell me about Capelli. Capelli? The proprietor of the Salamander restaurant. Oh, I know who you mean. What we know about him wouldn't cover a postage stamp. What we suspect would fill a library. Go on. Capelli's got a finger in most crooked pies. We know that, but we can't pin anything on him. He doesn't even come under the Aliens Act. British by naturalization. Most of the really big jobs are planned at the Salamander. In Capelli's private flat. We have a shred of evidence. Mm, I've heard rumors to the same effect. I'm pretty sure this hold-up was planned by Capelli. But those five dead men can't talk. Shot by Capelli? No. Capelli plays fair, according to his code. He doesn't foul his own nest. If he did, we'd have had him inside months ago. Well, even the best of them make a slip sooner or later. I hope you're right. Not interested in Capelli at the moment. It's the man who got away with the money I'm mm, after. That's not going to be easy. You don't have to tell me. Been working on the blasted thing for over six weeks. Oh, well, I suppose I'd better get down to it. Like a drink before you go? I would, but I can't. Got to see the AC. Can't breathe whiskey all over him. Probably get sacked on the spot in his present mood. Keep smiling, Coos. You never know your luck. Good thing I don't. Paula? Yes, Mr. Blake? When are you showing in Chief Inspector? They're getting on with the job. Fine. Now, I want you to phone the Salamander restaurant, book a table for two this evening. Make it uh, May 30. Yes, Mr. Blake. Be ready by 8.15. I'll pick you up. Me? Well, don't tell me you're doing something else this evening. No, of course I'm not. I hear the food of the Salamander is gorgeous. You deserve a little relaxation, Paula. Thank you, Mr. Blake. And, uh, is that your only reason? Of course, we might combine a little business with pleasure. Oh, I might have known it wasn't entirely for pleasure. Don't let it interfere with your appetite. Oh, don't worry, I won't. I shall order the most expensive dishes on the menu. You'll be satisfied with what you get, my girl. Good evening, Mr. Blake. Uh, madame? Mademoiselle. You are enjoying your meal yet? Oh, very nice, Mr. Capelli. So you know me, eh? I make it my business to know all who come to the salamander, Mr. Blake. I recommend the crepe Suzette. Or perhaps the uh, souffle surprise. No, oh, I think I'd like the souffle surprise. I see to it myself. Miss Grayson used to come here quite a lot, didn't she? Miss Grayson? Oh, come now, Capelli. You just said you make it your business to know everybody who comes to the salamander. Don't tell me you don't remember Norma Grayson. Oh, but of course, how sad. So beautiful, so young. It was a great pity. Did you know her well, Capelli? Not more than my other customers. She come here once, twice, or three times, perhaps, with her friend. Two attractive girls, Mr. Blake. Did you never came with anyone else? No. Always it was the two of them. Is Dr. Ridley a customer of yours? Dr. Ridley? No. No, I not know him. Uh, you will excuse me. I attend to <coughs> Mademoiselle Souffle. Mm, his favorite drink must be olive oil. A fat, unctuous bladder of lard. But dangerous. Did you notice his eyes? Hard and blank, like polished brown pebbles. Mm, but I must say his food is delicious. Quite sufficient to endear him to your susceptible young heart? My heart is not that susceptible. Look. I wonder where that archway leads to. The curtain archway. Oh, probably to Capelli's private flat. No, three people have gone through that archway in the last 15 minutes and they haven't come back. Friends of the boss, eh? There goes another one. Interesting. There must be something cooking apart from your souffle surprise. I'd rather like to know where they go to. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Paula, Blake. you must This is out of business hours and the girl is entitled to do as she likes in her spare time. I won't be a minute. I hope the lady will not be long, Mr. Blake. The souffle surprise should be served and eaten at once. Uh, Miss Dane has only gone to powder her nose. She will not find the lady's room that way. Oh, she must have made a mistake, Capelli. Mr. Blake, I think she'll not to make the mistake. Really? That does not matter. She will find nothing, you understand? A business conference, perhaps. That is all. There are no flies on you, are there, Capelli? I use the swat when it is necessary. 
I am glad to have this chance to speak to you. You make the inquiries about the death of Miss Grayson. Who told you that? Oh, Mr. Blake, let us not be like the Bambinos. We can help one another. From opposite sides? We both want to know how Norma Grayson died. Pneumonia. You not believe that. I not believe that. What's your interest, Capelli? Interest me? Oh, nothing. I am a respectable restaurateur. With sidelines. Oh, you make it a joke. There's no joke in holding up a van containing two million pounds. I know nothing about that, except what I read in the newspapers. One of these days, the law will catch up with you, Capelli. I am out, Mr. Blake. How can you think such things about me? Ah, here comes Miss Dane. Ah. A souffle surprise. I attend to it at once. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed yourself, Paula. You'd be surprised. You didn't expect to find out anything, did you? Well, of course I did. I cultivated a positive outlook. And pity had let you down. Capelli knew you were snooping. How nice for him. Do you see that waiter over there, the tall, thin one? Yes. Well, he's the man who searched the bungalow at Harvest Green. How do you know? Here comes my souffle surprise. I'm not saying a word more until I've eaten a large portion. I adore souffle surprise. I found you, Lou, when I got in, Governor. How would you get on with the salamander? I had quite an illuminating little chap with Capelli, but it was Paula who really went to town. Why? What did she do? Walked boldly into the lion's den and came out with a really important piece of information, a definite link between Capelli and Norma Grayson. Did you get anything out of Mrs. King? Well, not much, but what I did seemed a bit strange. All right, let's have it. Well, she's all up in arms against Dr. Ridley and the nurse because they wouldn't let her see Miss Grayson. But they wouldn't, eh? Well, she says she tried several times, but Mrs. Craig, that's a nurse, wouldn't let her pass the front door. Did she see Miss Grayson before she was taken ill? No. She said she didn't know she'd come down to the bungalow. The first she knew about it was when she went down to do a bit of tying it up and got the bird from his nurse. Mm, they were determined that no one should contact Norma Grayson. Think she might get help. Possibly, it fits in. With what? With an idea that's buzzing around in my head. Uh, well, I'm not going to ask you what that is, Gus. You can chew over this if you like. There was something that ought to have been in that bungalow that wasn't. Well, that's an easy one. The suitcase. You're wrong. And that's not what I meant at all. Yes, Mr. Nichols, I got all that. Yes, I'll tell Mr. Blake... It makes it difficult, doesn't it? Uh, you'll be sending along the written report, I suppose. Uh, yes, we would. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for telephoning. Goodbye. Hmm. Good morning, Paula. I hear you distinguished yourself last night. Oh, it was nothing, really. Well, the governor was tickled pink anyway. <laughs> but it was a bit of luck over in what that chap said, wasn't it? Well, there was a certain element of trance. Oh, come off it, Paula. You got out of the way of this waiter because you didn't want to be caught snooping. Then you accidentally overheard what he said to the other man. I seized my opportunity. Who was that on the phone just now, Paula? Nichols. He said he can't find any trace of Norma Grayson, who she was or her background. There's no record of her birth, even. Do you think she changed her name? I mean, lots of models and stage people do. Hmm, it's possible. Wouldn't Kendrick or Janet Lacey, no? They don't. I've asked them. None of them. And that includes their agent, Kenneth Miles. Knew her as anything else but Norma Grayson. Well, Nichols says he's going on searching anyway. Well, let's hope he turns something up. Is it important? It might help. This girl obviously got herself mixed up with something pretty dangerous. Capelli? Yes, I think Capelli had a great deal to do with it. You believe she was murdered, don't you, Gav? I'm sure she was. Oh, if you both made up your minds, who am I to contradict you? I suppose she knew something and we had to get rid of her. And they were afraid she might have left something behind in the bungalow, so the waiter was sent down to make sure. Well, splendid. You really are excelling yourselves, aren't you? I don't quite like the way you said that, Mr. Blake. I think it's time to run up the flag and see if anyone salutes it. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, first of all, it means a visit to Mr. Jonas Byer. Now, what can I do for... Oh, it's you again, sir. It is indeed, Mr. Biles. How's business? Plenty of clients? Yes, well, I hardly think that to be a subject for levity, sir. Is there something important you wish to see me about? I think so. What is your usual procedure when you're called in uh, professionally? I can't see the object of these questions. Perhaps not. Just answer, please. Well, the body has to be measured for the size of the coffin. You did this in the case of Miss Grayson? Oh, yes, of course. Was Dr. Ridley there? Uh, no, no, he wasn't. Only the nurse. Mrs. Cray. That's right. Don't you usually take an assistant to help you, Mr. Byrne? Yes, uh, but, uh, well, he was ill. So in this instance, you had to do it all yourself, including the placing of the body in the coffin. Uh, well, Dr. Ridley and Mrs. Craig helped me. Uh, he was present on that occasion. I don't at all understand the meaning of these Who questions? supplies you with your fix, Mr. Byrne? I don't know what you mean. You're a drug addict, aren't you? Where do you get the drug from? Dr. Ridley? Really, you've no right to make such unfounded accusations. Not unfounded, Mr. Byrne. I must ask you to leave my establishment, sir, at once. I refuse to listen to any more. I'm sure you'll listen to this. I'm getting an exhumation order from the Home Office. An exhumation order? To exhume the body of Miss Norma Grayson. We want to know exactly how she died. Goodbye, Mr. Byrne. Why 
want us to come down to the bungalow, Mr. Blake. You're sincere, Miss Lacey, but I'd rather you didn't ask me to explain at present. I suppose all this secrecy was necessary. It is essential that nobody knows we're here, Kendrick. Mr. Blake always has a very good reason for doing things, so it's difficult to see what it is sometimes until he wants you to. Thank you, Paula. How long will we have to stay here, Mr. Blake? I can't tell you that, Miss Lacey. Miss Dane has brought food and we can make tea or coffee. It looks as if you expected a long session. Mm, it could be long, could be quite short. I don't mind. If we get to the truth about Norma, you may have a very... Unpleasant experience, Kendrick. I'm afraid it can't be avoided. Listen. What's that? Preliminary warning. Things are beginning to move. I wish I knew what this was all about. No, we're all in the same boat. We may as well be going, though. We've got plenty of time. Going? We've got a bit of a walk before us. A uh, pause. Switch the lights out. We don't want to advertise our presence when we open the front door. And out you go and be as quiet as you can. Where are we going? We're going to the churchyard. How much longer, Biles? Yeah, no, uncover, Doctor. Another six inches. Hurry up. We don't want the exclamation people to arrive before we finish. Yeah, but they, they won't get an order as quickly as that. This is crazy. You don't, don't know when that man Blake applied for it. We can't afford to take any risk. Get a spade there and help. Uh, they will know the coffin's been removed. We'll be away by then. Come on, hurry. Uh, that's it. Now, quick. Clear away this loose earth. Now, I'll, I'll take this in. Uh, you take the other. Put my heat up to that gutter. Get the lid off. Oh, I must get my breath back. It is not necessary, Dr. Ridley, for the short time you will need it. Capelli! You think you'll get away without it? Uh, you fool, Craig! But you shouldn't have done it. It couldn't have been better. And you're not going to have a pull over me for the rest of my life, either of you. Hold it, Coots, grab that woman. Hey, I keep still holding you. Coots, pull a grey wig off. All right, Kendrick. Who is she? Norma. It, it's Norma. But who's in the coffin, then? Two million pounds in used five-pound notes. With any luck, the assistant commissioner's blood pressure will now go back to normal, Coots. I'm off back to America tomorrow, Mr. Black. But you asked me to come round. I've got all the dope now, and I thought you'd like to hear it. I've never had such a shock in my life as when I saw Norma in that churchyard. It's more than four days ago, but I haven't got over it. You never knew Norma Grayson, not the real Norma. She fooled everybody. We've traced her back. Her father was hanged for murder, the murder of her mother. Norma was brought up by an aunt until she was 16. Then she ran away and got a job in the chorus. How did she get mixed up with Capelli and this two million? She got a hint of Capelli's plan from one of the men who were in it. And she got the idea of letting them get away with it and then grabbing the money for herself. She shot those five men. Oh, no. She made Ridley do that. She had a hold over him. He was running a drug racket and she knew about it. But why all this illness business? Well, she got scared. She'd got the money at the bungalow. Capelli was suspicious. She hatched up the death plot with Ridley. It solved two problems, where to hide the money and how to hide herself. She became Nurse Craig. She knew she could count on Biles. He depended on Ridley for heroin. It seems impossible that Norma... You saw her shoot Capelli. I'll bet she'd have shot Ridley and Bars if we hadn't stopped her. What put you onto it? Her room in the bungalow. It hadn't been tidied or cleaned, but there were no powders or creams or makeup. Nobody would have taken those except Norma Grayson. If Norma Grayson wasn't in the coffin, it wasn't difficult to guess what was. You applied for the exhumation order. Oh, that was a bluff. I guess Bars would tell Ridley and start the ball rolling. I tipped off Capelli. I seem to be well out of it. And yet Norma could be so sweet. She was the type who could be anything that suited her. Uh, how is Miss Lacey, by the way? Oh, fine. Uh, she's coming to the airport to see me off. Mm -hmm. Nice girl, Kendrick. Give her my regards. 